Lone heroes only win in the movies. And then only if they've got a good script. In the real world, collaboration and connection is what wins. In the real world, working together socially is what wins. Two and a half years ago, I came to a stark realisation through interacting and meeting James. And that stark realisation was it took a bright, young, generous person to have computer code be taught in his school. Because he started a computer club in his school. There was a huge amount of demand. Lots and lots of kids wanted to learn how to code, but nobody in his school was teaching it. Now, I dropped out of high school. Uh, kids, don't use that as an excuse to best your parents. Um, and I homeschooled my kids. So I hadn't interacted with the school system for 20 plus years. And even when I was in school, we learned how to program computers. You know, back when I was 12. And that's too many years ago. And yet, when James told me he had had to actually teach the kids in his school how to program, and I went looking, I could not find a single computer class in school for kids anywhere. So that kind of lit a fire under me because my day job is investing in companies and most of the time companies come to me, you know, people come to me and they say, hey, we've got this great idea for this new development. And I go, great, have you got a programmer on your team? And they go, no, we're going to outsource it to India. And I say, great, I'm not going to give you any money because you can't build software that way. Not something new. Maybe you can maintain an old platform, but you can't build something new. And so I saw this huge empty gap of, of great programmers, and I get this horrible news that nobody is teaching kids how to code. And from my homeschooling days, I can tell you a few things about kids. They are geniuses at divergent thinking. They are amazing at figuring stuff out for themselves. Kids will learn through play, and they will learn through hard fun. Hard fun is figuring it out to the point of where you're going to burst into tears, but you'll still figure it out and you'll know it. And they'll do all of that by themselves. Kids also collaborate naturally if you give them a context in which to do it. This is something that I think a lot of educational uh, theorists and practices miss, is creating a context in which learning together is an actually an interesting thing. And with James, we saw this opportunity. What if we could create a space, a context, in which all of those things showed up, where it was fun, where it was hard, where kids would work together, and we figured if we could just do that and create a good enough system, test it, maybe, just maybe, it would spread. And of course, you know, being open source lunatics, like you both are, we thought, why don't we make the whole thing open source? Maybe it could spread faster. Because we know, you know, if it's free, it spreads really quick. Two and a half years on, we have spread across the world. And the evidence is in the room of how much creativity is being unleashed. Tinkering with stuff is practical learning. And being told that all you have to do is be cool is a good way of inspiring that. If you tinker with something enough and you are determined enough, you will attain mastery. Mastery takes years, so you might as well start young. The latest research that we have seen shows that kids as young as five can learn programming think pro programmatic thinking and they benefit from that throughout their school life and throughout their career. That's what created Coda Dojo, a big gap. And how we filled that gap is with these thoughts, that kids can learn together, that you can be cool, that it will spread with being free, and that the less you push, the more comes.
of that. But I've been asked also to talk about the future of Code and Dojo. And the future of Code and Dojo, well, you know, if I'd gone in the third month of Code and Dojo and someone said we'd be having this coolest project awards with, you know, Intel support and everything, I'd be like, mm, okay, that's a possibility, but that's not probably where I'm looking. But here we are, and it's fantastic. But what's the real future in, in my view, and, and I hope in James' view? Well, when you look at what Code Dojo has achieved and how it's achieved it, it's achieved it through goodwill. It's achieved it through the goodwill of all the people that choose to get involved. Particularly the champions. The people who come to a dojo every Saturday, like I do, or every Tuesday, whatever, open the doors, make sure everybody gets in, make sure the room's clean afterwards. Particularly the parents who volunteer, the parents who come in and help and realise that Coda Dojo is not a free ride, even though it's free. Particularly the mentors who come in and help, the people who have got the bug. Particularly the venues that offer their rooms for free. Well, the future, as far as I can see, is more of that. Because we've got a long way to go. The reality is that demand for talented digital creatives is growing exponentially, worldwide. India has run out of talent. China has run out of talent. The US has run out of talent. The best, most powerful thing that you can contribute and be empowered by, in my view, learning today, is being a digital creative of some kind. And as far as I can see, Coda Dojo is the most cost-effective, most interesting, most fun way of delivering that. So what's the future? The future is more parents, more champions, more partners making more dojos happen. More of this, bigger, better, and still all for free. Still all without big fundraising drives. Still all without huge bureaucracy. Still all, above all, being cool. I call upon you, if you know somebody, anyone, anywhere, who's thinking about starting a Coda Dojo, tell them to start. The number one thing that we've seen that works is setting the date of your first Coda Dojo. How many champions are in the room? Put your hands up. Any, any champions? Like anyone who's like, yeah, yeah, a few of us. How many parents in the room that have actually helped out the Coda Dojo? Keep your hands up. Right? These are the people, these are the people that make Coda Dojo work. There's not enough. We need more. The future of Coda Dojo is incredibly bright if we keep recruiting more people to help out and to, to, to contribute. And so that's my primary message. Let's keep the goodwill coming. By the way, I have a, a, a little thing to announce today too. Um, if you go to the website, namarcomputer.ichc.ie, I have a new supercomputer, and there's a competition to see who gets to name it. And I would love it to be named by a Coda Dojo kid. <laughs> so give that a go. And again, the last thing, thank you to everyone. James and I may have founded and kicked off Coda Dojo, we may have done the first testing, but the reality is Coda Dojo is way bigger than either of us, or indeed both of us put together. We collaborated at the start, you're collaborating now. Coda Dojo is you. So thank you all. The code of Dutch. Thank you.